Let me start with the disclaimer or proper attribution. The written materials were prepared by my partner, Kevin Handley, who is also a professor at the center, who was called away unexpectedly today to Washington. So the written materials are all correct. The color commentary by me is all suspect. And with that clarification, I'm going to run through some but not all of this because we could spend an hour and a half just reading off the items on the list. In the last couple of weeks, we started with the Obama administration announcing general principles for financial regulatory reform. I won't read them to you. I will tell you that as a consumer financial services lawyer, I take particular interest in concepts such as supervising financial products based on how real people make financial decisions. The question I ask is, does that mean we're going to have 30-year fixed rate mortgages and that's it? These are just principles at this point with no articulation of how we're going to get to them other than I guess we're going to go watch the G20 and see if others agree with them. We also have the budget in the last couple of weeks, which includes a number of items of relevance to financial institutions. A couple that jump out at me are the elimination of the FELP program. There was a number published yesterday by the FELP Industry Association, MSHELP, that that means approximately 35,000 jobs will be eliminated in the private sector, which has delivered FELP for the last 40 plus years. We also have another $250 billion in the rainy financial institution day fund as a part of the budget. Treasury, Geithner gets specific, more specific. We have a stress test going on with the 19 largest financial institutions who will then, like other banks, have access to the capital assistance program. In addition to what's in the outline, the term sheet for the capital assistance program note that typically a financial institution can receive up to 2% of risk-weighted assets in the capital assistance under the program, but the Treasury can award, quote, exceptional assistance, unquote, to systemically important institutions, which I guess means there is a blank check for too big to fail. Let's see. The mortgage loan modification concepts that are at the heart of the Obama's multifaceted foreclosure program, or foreclosure crisis mediation program, were announced in the last two weeks. And these are important as a backdrop to what Frank is going to talk about, among other things. The modification guidelines are reminiscent, borrow heavily on the FDIC programs used with EMAP borrowers who had option arms, or exploding arms as we like to call them in my class. And look at taking a borrower and really looking at what is their ability to pay rather than what is the collateral worth. We ignore what the collateral is worth. We start with reducing the rate on the loan to 2%, possibly extending the amortization to 40 years, and potentially even forbearing the collection and the assertion of interest on principal, all with the goal of getting the debt-to-income ratio for a borrower who has a job down to 31%. To the extent that we use mechanisms that are going to erode the position of the lender to go from 38% to 31%, the Treasury pays cash to subsidize 50% of the reduction in the payment. So there's a sort of a pain-sharing mechanism involved in this concept. I think maybe this is a good time to also mention that the Congressional Oversight Panel that was created under TARP issued on, I think it was Thursday last, the 6th of March, their report, all 257 pages of it, of the foreclosure crisis and how we're doing or not doing in dealing with it. It's fairly critical of how we're doing. It's a great read. I want to thank Frank for pointing it out yesterday. It's coming up very recently on the web. And if you Google Congressional Oversight Foreclosure, it's the first thing that pops up on the 
the list. It's a page turner. I was up to 11.30 last night. It really is because it's, it, it highlights some of the things that uh, I'm going to talk about later today. They are very, very serious systemic obstacles to um, making economically rational decisions around um, the collapse of the housing market and the resulting issues for consumer debt. Okay, we all know about Citigroup. Uh, the FFIEC announces that yes, we are going to cooperate with Treasury on the stress testing, and yes, all the banks are going to cooperate with the administration on the loan mod program. Um, Kevin in included SR094, because I think it's relevant to every banker in the room, you know, especially the large bankers who are probably not in the room, but um, the articulation, uh, re-articulation by the Fed of restrictions on dividends by bank holding companies um, was a way to provide market cover for the large bank holding companies to do what rationally they should have done some time ago, which is to stop paying dividends as if they were public utilities. Um, now that is going to hurt the first person who does it, um, who doesn't have earnings but pays dividends. Uh, but if there's a regulatory pronouncement that says we should all do it together, um, then we don't have one bank or one or a couple of banks taking all the heat. Uh, and as we've seen on page uh, eight in this outline, um, the large financial institutions have all announced in the last week uh, the dividends are going down 85% for their payouts. Um, we have an announcement from Fed and Treasury of the actual launch of TAUF on March 25, some fine tuning to the haircuts. That's the, uh, um, the over collateralization that you have to create for uh, the asset backed securities that will then be collateral for um, loans from the federal government. Uh, the, with the haircuts on federal student loan um, collateral and uh, small business loan collateral having been rationalized greatly since after all that was called those types of collateral are essentially um, full faith and credit in the US government. Um, uh, skipping forward, um, not going to talk about uh, the tax deferred asset ruling, which I'm told by the cognizant is just cover for, for uh, uh, recent acquisitions in a trouble situation. Um, the FDIC got plenty of, of press for announcing the scope of losses in the fourth quarter um, and then in the third item on page five uh, telling us that we were going to take 20 basis points, no I mean 10, um, which was a real confidence building exercise, um, but hopefully it will be in that range. And also announced its enforcement actions um, for the quarter. Uh, the only uh, action I could find in New England were my friends at Little Kennebunk Savings Bank in Kennebunk, Maine, um, who had some problems with flood certs to the tune of a $25,000 civil money penalty. Um, otherwise, the problems that were noted by the FDIC were outside of this region. Um, moving down the, the list, we had Chairman Baird uh, sort of repeating that we don't see taking over large financial institutions. Um, we also had the FDIC saying if you're a three, a four, or a five, uh, not a um, financial institution uh, in good shape, you should be shrinking your position in brokerage products. Uh, that's distilling what seven or eight pages say, but that's the way I read it. Um, you should be shrinking, not growing. Certainly not growing, and probably shrinking your position in brokerage products, or you will be uh, criticized for having for liquidity capitalization. Um, and I guess this is another good place to, to mention the Chairman Bernanke's speech yesterday, which also strongly supported the idea that we are going to support but not nationalize systemically important financial institutions. Um, the OTS letter, which seems self evident that uh, capital isn't capital until you have it changes a rule that the OTS followed with um, some of its stronger institutions like EMAP to allow the counting of capital that was just a promise of capital that won't happen anymore. Um, the SEC uh, 
confirm that shareholders who have voting rights under TARP uh, to vote on um, management compensation will, will have those rights starting um, in the first half of this year. The SEC has granted an exemption to facilitate um, the TALF um, investment banking process uh, from restrictions that would otherwise apply to broker dealers uh, facilitating the credit side of the TALF uh, structure. Um, we've all read that the Federal Home Loan Bank with Boston announced losses. Others have announced losses. Uh, I think Seattle was yesterday. Um, and so uh, those who will represent or are leading institutions who um, had uh, Fannie, Freddie preferred, now get to ask themselves the question, um, do I have to deal with accounting treatment for uh, the previously um, under $10 cent a dollar stock of home loan banks, and do I have to do it as a 123108, which is another hit earnings for community banks, if that's where we're going. Um, let's see, in the omnibus spending bill passed in the House is not with a bang but a whimper, a battle that's been going on since 1999 about whether or not um, real estate brokers and property management are um, closely related to banking or otherwise permissible for financial holding companies under Grant Plan, Graham Lee Spliley. Um, the, uh, the answer is no. Um, and the banking press reported that the real estate brokers are not floating. Um, I guess that's the consolation. The um, uh, House passed, and Frank Morris is going to talk about at length the bankruptcy bill with crammed out in it. Um, and that's really our drill down today. Um, I mentioned above uh, the Money Center Financial Institutions, uh, large bank holding companies, seeking and cutting their dividends. Um, and Martin, I told you I'd get done in less than 20 minutes. <laughs> Last but not least, uh, my friends at Ballard Sklar, uh, who I would think arbitration is the cure for all ills that consumers bring against banks, lost big time in the Supreme Court yesterday, um, which essentially said you have to let a state court judge decide whether you could use the Federal Arbitration Act to deny a consumer uh, <coughs> his name 